Good morning, colleagues, and um, I'm truly honored to be invited to present at this um, seminar today. And um, like a true librarian, I would like to end this seminar with a story. And a story, this story is about a journey that I undertook fairly alone, but that was mostly due to COVID-19. The story started with my attendance to the first research and information literacy in the work, um, workplace seminar in 2019. I attended the seminar and people who know me um, will remember that I was madly inspired after the seminar. And um, I just went hunting for an opportunity to implement what we've been exposed to at the, this first seminar. Lo and behold, the opportunity crossed my roads just only two months after our first seminar in November 2019, and that was in January 2020. And just as I was starting to conceptualize this thing and starting to think, how am I going to approach it and what am I going to do, COVID-19 happened. And I was um, unwillingly totally alone in this journey. Um, there was a vacancy in the research librarian position at that stage. Um, and Joseph, um, that is not to, um, to make you feel guilty or anything, <laughs> but Joseph wasn't there. Um, Janine was so occupied with so many things and the opportunity crossed my, crossed my path. I was inspired and I decided I had a clean slate from the um, but um, that was permitted to me by the um, coordinator of the course within which I developed this short course, um, Dr. Alna Barnard. She's um, and I'll tell you the story, what happened and how it happened. Now, this is a disclaimer just to say that um, it happened um, and you will see later in my presentation, I explain it as something that happened like um, the expression to say building a plane whilst you are flying. You, you, <laughs> you are in it, you don't know how to build the plane and while you are flying, you are constantly scared that you are going to crash this plane. The only thing that you know is that you have to keep this plane in the air. And, and that is just what I'm going to share with you today is a story of what happened with me um, in COVID-19 um, after being madly inspired, got an opportunity, didn't have a chance to check it with anybody except to speak to the person who asked me to do this thing, the academic um, course coordinator. And um, I will I will share with you how the journey went. And in the end, in my opinion, um, I'm sure afterwards there are so many gaps. There were so many gaps, um, so so many um, opportunities for improvement, so many things that I think um, could have been done differently. But still it was such a positive experience for me and also for the students involved a very small group of students who were involved that i decided to be even more bold than flying this plane without <laughs> um, um, a plan i decided to start telling the story so um last year at the liasa conference i submitted a paper and i told the story and um, I did, and um, my colleagues here invited me to also tell the story because it started in this room. The story started in this room in 2019 from an experience that I had. So um, I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, yeah, and it's it's basically a story. It's, there's not much scientific about it. This 
I don't think how much of what I did <laughs> that we went through is legal and is within the um, correct theoretical frameworks, but I can assure you that I had spent a lot of time thinking about it, a lot of time um, reading, a lot of reading, a lot of um, also helped me a lot was attending each and every training session that was offered on Blackboard at that stage in COVID-19 by our CIET department in assisting us how to go about to develop courses and what to consider. So it gave me a bit of signposts. So if you are brave enough, and if I'm maybe at not at the risk of being fired after this presentation, I'm I'm going to share with you what happened and the story um, as it folded out. Um, also, another disclaimer before I start, there's two concepts that that is very difficult for me to pronounce, and, and I suppose they are very much interlinked. The one is workplace information literacy, and the other aspect that is constantly also um, woven into what I have to share is the contents of the concept of work integrated learning. So to my understanding, it's it's more or less two sides of the same coin. So um, yeah, I, I will be sharing the, I, I think after what I've learned, that workplace information literacy also has um, inevitably has a lot to do work with work integrated learning and and I'm still not sure where the one starts and the other one ends but excuse me if I sometimes get a bit confused with those terms so the title of my paper is where there's a will there's a way Right, and um, here and there, most of the story I'm going to read because I, there's a lot of theoretical things and a lot of things that I wanted to share with you that I'm scared that I might forget. And um, I'm going to be a bit st um, stuck to my notes. But to start off with this quotation, um, the late Secretary General of the United Nations, Mr. Kofi Annan, once said that literacy is a bridge from misery to hope. It's a road to human progress and the means through which every man, woman and child can realize their full potential. Now, as a librarian, I'm sure that all of you feel inspired by these words. I really believe that literacy in every possible form has the potential to transform not only individuals, but society at large. I furthermore believe that workplace information literacy has the potential um, to enrich students learning by unlocking the potential of theory and bringing practice into an academic setting. Um, this was also this specific um, quotation that I'm using, the last one about workplace information literacy, um, are the words used by Professor Chris um, Winberg, who presented, who was our keynote speaker at the first um, work, this seminar, rural seminar. So this presentation will describe, like I say, the story of the implementation of a workplace. It was more an, I can't say it was an implementation of a workplace information literacy um, program. It was more an experiment with workplace information literacy. And the story that I will share with you will also just um, share with you the road map that I took, the details of the journey and the lessons that I learned. So as I already said, the biggest inspiration for um, this journey that I in, undertook was the fact that I attended CPUT's first research and information literacy seminar in 2019. A second aspect that inspired me, and that was actually before I attended this first seminar, is Wellington Libraries. Those of you that know the Wellington Library space design, 
will know that the space, how the space is designed already made me think of this concept of how the library could become much closer to the industry that we are serving. And we at the Wellington Library are serving the education faculty. So we are serving um, teacher, um, trainer teachers. And then the last aspect that um, motivated me, that inspired me, was CPT strategic objectives. And I will just now share a little bit of details of each of those aspects that inspired me. So in the first research and information literacy seminar, and I know you all saw the brief of this seminar, it is, it's the same than this seminar. It, 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 it was based on the principle that um, CPUT as a university of technology focuses on preparing students for a specific industry. So CPUT libraries in identified the need to improve students' IL skills, but within a workplace specific context. So in November 2019, CPUT libraries presented this course. And the, the um, objectives of this, um, this uh, seminar was, as it is now, to facilitate open discussions between librarians, academics and industry. Another intent of the seminar was to look at how the library could assist in supporting CPUT's work integrated learning philosophy. So I can just say that, um, and this is another definition that I um, got from Prof. Chris Winberg's um, keynotes uh, address on that day, and she defined work <clears throat> my apologies, work, uh, work integrated learning philosophy as an educational approach that aligns academic and workplace practices to the benefit of students. So it's basically a pedagogical strategy that enables students to practice and apply their discipline knowledge and the to build their workplace and employability skills. So as I've said several times, that seminar inspired me greatly. Then I mentioned briefly in the introduction that the Wellington Library space design was also a source of in inspiration. And on the photo behind me, you will see what it looks like in the, um, the section where I work in the um, Wellington Library which we call the, we refer to it as a model school library. And what we, um, the space allowed us to design the library or to, to um, set the library up in such a way that the academic and research collections are on the ground floor level and the collections that are on the first level where, where my office is, where I, um, where I work, um, is the, the section where we host all what I like to call work integrated collections. And I'll, I started also already before COVID-19, started thinking about what kind of services we could offer that closely mirrored our education faculty students' future careers. So we try to establish a look and feel, a collection, a service that resonates with our students' future careers. And, and that is just a picture of what it looks like. You can see it, it's, it, it looks like a school library setting and our collections are similar to that. Our students also use this collection specifically for practice teaching purposes. So that was the, the, the thing that also inspired me a lot, was what we had already in place physically. Then another aspect that inspired me was CPUT's vision and mission. Um, and because it points towards the strive to support students to prosper in their future careers and to con contribute positively, positively towards um, improvement of society and their CPUT's vision. So, as I said, I was madly inspired and I was like, I was like this.
It's not the end, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and sorry that I couldn't play the holes. Oh, oops. Right. So where did the opportunity, when did the opportunity arrive? So in January 2020, um, I was requested by the um, academic literacy course coordinator for a course that um, we call the Great R Diploma Student Course. So it's a it's a course that we offer to early childhood okay. development teachers. And the subject that she asked me to present an information literacy skills component of is a third year subject after we have already presented the on the in the first year for this diploma course we presented the standard information literacy course to this group of students in the second year we offered a refresher information literacy course and then and also i must say it's a brand new course by the time she asked me if the library could develop a information literacy course for the third year after they've already had information literacy for the first year and the second year, I said there's no way that we can do another refresher of the standard information literacy course. So I looked at the academic literacy courses um, objectives, which were are those following objectives to critically evaluate information to development literacy in various genres to develop students um, into scholars researchers and to encourage students um, critical thinking. And I suggested to the lecturer if if it will be all right with her if I developed a a work integrated um, information literacy program. And I said to her, these will be the objectives, what I will try to achieve. I wanted to develop the work integrated literacy skills of those students. I wanted to develop their knowledge in children's literature. I wanted to create uh, an awareness of the value of early literacies. Because I personally believe that if we want to solve the basic literacy challenges that we have in our country, we have to start with early literacies, especially I think children's books are valuable in this regard. And um, I also asked her if I could assist and in developing a kind of content where students would be able to critically evaluate and be exposed to workplace specific information. So, but before we can continue, I just thought I must just sh share a couple of definitions about what is workplace information literacy. And I know a couple of people discussed that already yesterday. And the only thing that I can say about that is that in all of the above definitions, what is emphasized is the fact that workplace information literacy assumes an individual's ability to find, use, evaluate and apply information, resources and literacies. And it sounds familiar to ordinary information literacy. The only aspect that is added to this is within a specific work related content context. And I particularly liked this quotation by Oswell of 2007 that says information literacy, literacy skills are among the key skills required for success in information based society, societies. Consequently, te teachers who undertake re the responsibility of teaching should possess these skills. Developing a high level of efficiency in these skills will also affect the success of teachers' work performance and personal su success in an increasingly information-based society. So because our students are um, training to become teachers, I decided to go back to the basics and to just look at some guiding um, documents and policies to just make sure that I at least stay in a certain kind of a framework. So the documents that I studied and read when I started developing this was the South African Norms and Standards for Teachers. 
I also specifically looked at the South African and um, the SAQWA graduate attitude attributes um, document um, and then of course the Department of Higher Education's minimum requirements for teacher education qualifications and then the United Kingdom's uh, that I found a very useful document initial teacher training the core content framework of that so um, I'm not going to talk too much about the situation of COVID. I already said that we were involved in emergency remote teaching situation. Then the design principles that guided the process. I, I, can, I can just say that um, the principles that I leaned on was the principles that I discovered through this book by Sir Ken Robinson on creative schools. So I was, uh, I, I'm really a uh, a good, a, a strong support of, of Sir Ken Robinson's material and what he has written. And I like the concept um, of what he suggested you should do when you design a course or when you design a curriculum uh, content. So I worked with his um, pro progressive teaching, um, what he said, progressive teaching is based on learning by discovery. I use those principles, self-expression, small group activities and the flipped classroom model. Also the same um, Sir Ken Robinson said that when you um, when you look, when you teach students, you have to also um, consider the most important 21st century skills that student needs. So um, I kept that in mind when I designed, especially the assessment activities, I kept those skills in mind. And I'm just going to mention them briefly, the interdisciplinary skills, learning skills and life and career skills. And lastly, again, Sir Ken Robinson said that instead of having a curriculum, educational institutions should facilitate eight core competencies. That spoke to me in a way that I thought if, if one can consider to try to implement those competencies in a, in, in a sort of a content development, then you will be addressing a lot of issues. So what he calls that as the eight C's, it's creativity, criticism, communication, collaboration, compassion, composure, and citizenship. So um, I think the training librarians and the educators and the teachers who are here would recognize that the principles that I try to use are the principles that are related to active learning and assessment for learning. And speaking of assessment, um, when I designed the assessments, because I had to design assessments since um, the course um, contributed 20% towards the students marks, I um, leaned strongly on the um, Bloom's tax taxonomy um, of higher level thinking and I try to assist in ensuring that the assessments involve students higher order thinking such as the ability to analyze and evaluate ideas as well as the ability to create new and original work. Um, now I know that the next slide is a very long slide um, with a lot of content and, and I don't want to go through all of that, but just to list um, to you what I, the, all of the various themes and content aspects that I included in this course with the permission of the um, academic course coordinator. So a lot of that has to do with information resources specifically for the context of early childhood education, open um, education resources for teachers, um, early childhood teachers, free online teaching support. support. Um, I had to look at the ethical um, use of information sources, especially in a work um, workplace environment. And then I spent a lot of time on the issues of children's literature and storytelling and um, reading promotion and the importance of literacy. Uh, literacy. Um, 
Yeah, and I developed it into five modules and the content was divided all of those objectives that I listed into five modules. Uh, module one was information sources, ethical use, teaching specific resources, especially looking at open ac um, education resources where they can find information resources that's openly available to them. line it's a group a small group of students it's um early childhood educate education students they are diploma students they are mostly adult learners and they are already teachers in mostly in a rural setting and most of them are not very computer literate so the biggest challenge that we experienced in um, in presenting this course was the fact that they really struggled with technology and we really struggled with connectivity issues. Um, but the students are uh, um, a wonderful group of students. They are um, even more excited <laughs> than I am about the, the course and they were very cooperative. We spoke freely. We developed a wonderful um, relationship over the course of the, the five weeks that I presented the course. And um, I can just say that their participation was wonderful. I did a, a feedback online evaluation form um, and I just tried to establish how they found the course and, and I was satisfied with the feedback that I received. 79% of them um, gave me feedback and most of them said that they really found it useful for the work specific content. And as I mentioned earlier, the journey was like building a, flood, a plane as you fly because there was a lot of risk and uncertainty and not really knowing where to go, what to do. And although um, I was very inspired, there was no blueprint. So consequently, this is a work in progress. And I think that this seminar and follow up discussions and engagement is an important way to to guide this initiative, this kind of initiative, but I think it's also a wonderful opportunity to say it can be done <laughs> and it was done. Um, and and yeah, we could have all broken our necks, but we are here to tell the story. So uh, in my opinion, the way forward would be especially on on a level of listening i think this is this seminar and and i'm so grateful that we were allowed to present another seminar like this prof and janine is that the more we can listen to each other and what i what i, I unfortunately haven't been able to attend yesterday is that there's so much more than just work specific information literacy. They are just such a vast and diverse variety of literacies that that we have a role to play in. But I think from my side, I think the most important thing is that we stop and that we listen firstly to our industry partners, to our academic partners, and last but not the least, definitely to our students and what they need, um, especially our students that already have the opportunity to go into um, a work place context and to share what what they you know what they needed, what where the gaps are. And I would like to end this presentation with um, this quotation and with the heading that says libraries and literacy and research in the broadest sense of the term matter because libraries are placed in unique positions 
to mediate the educational and discipline or workplace landscapes in order to identify knowledge, competencies and skills that students will require while studying and when in transition to the workplace.